verse 6. Malachi, that sounds better. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. It's amazing how such little stuff affects people walk with the Lord. Isn't it crazy? I mean, it can start being nice weather and people quit coming to church. Isn't it crazy? Well, let's go. Uh-oh, you guys aren't planning on being here tonight, are you? I don't read, I'm done reading your mail. I done reading your mail. You have your softball party, amen, on Saturday. This is the Lord's Day. Yeah, Lord, I, all right, Lord, all right. Boy, ain't nothing tougher than being an end-time preacher. Amen. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. And if you have it, say glory. For I am the Lord, I change not. Say it with me. I am the Lord. Mm-hmm. I change not. All right, how, how about let's do this. Let's say it like we mean it. I am the Lord, and I change not. Oh, now that sounds a lot better. Come on, say it with me. He is the Lord. Say it with me. He is the Lord, and he changes not. <laughs> Someone say amen. Maddie, jump up here and pray over us, baby, and uh, pray for the Lord to give your daddy strength this morning. Can you do that? Amen. Let's pray. Thank you for bringing us here today. Just touch us the remainder of this service. Let it be blessed. Open up our heart and open up our mind and let us receive this word and give our pastor strength. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you don't mind, give the Lord a shout of praise if you can. After all God's done for you, and you're going to give him a praise like that, some of you ought to be running, leaping, and dancing. I know where you were. And the old crack house messed up. Now you got to the place you're going to give Jesus a little. Hallelujah. Come on, man. Hey, man, God's been good. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Someone say amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Malachi, amen, is the last book in the Old Testament. And the Lord declares, I am the Lord, and I change not. The psalmist said, long ago you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will change them like a garment and discard them. But you are always the same. You will live forever. Hebrews says this, and we ought to know this one. Jesus Christ, help me, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I wonder why God's word emphasizes to us that God never changes. I wonder why we have at least three, there's more, portions of scripture. I've read three this morning, there's more, that proclaims to us that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he never changes. Now, why would God want you to know that he never changes? Why is he trying to uh, proclaim to us, trying to get us to see and understand that he never changes? I want you to hear this. It's because your life will change. Seasons change. Situations changes. And if you're not careful, you will think that the situation you're in now, that he's not God over. But God is proclaiming to us this morning that no matter what the season is, no matter what the hour is, no matter what you're going through, he's still God. I don't change. I don't care. If it's early morning, if it's in the afternoon, or the midnight hour, he's proclaiming, I'm still God. The same power I had yesterday, I got today. And the power I got today, I will have tomorrow. So 
Somebody shouted to me this morning that he's the, he is the Lord and he changes not. Will you shout that to me? He is the Lord and he changes not. I got a word for you this morning. I don't know where you're at, but he's still God. I don't know what you're facing this morning, but he's still God. He's bigger than what you're in this morning. He's still God. He doesn't change. He hasn't got weaker. He's not sleeping this morning. He's not tired this morning. He's not weary this morning. He's as strong and powerful as he's ever been. The Syrians thought, well, he's just God of the mountaintop. That's what it says there in 1 Kings chapter 20, that he's just the God of the mountaintop. And they said, let's get the people of God and let's fight them in the valley. Because if we fight them in the valley, we'll surely defeat them. Because the God that they serve is just God of the mountaintop. And you know what the Syrians realized real quick? He's not just God of the mountaintop. He's God in the valley. He's God in the valley. See, you need, you need to get the revelation. I believe God, in fact, I know God, is wanting, to know, wanting you to know this morning that your situation has changed, but he has not changed. I said your situation, you got a negative report. It's dark this morning. You're in a storm this morning. You're wondering what's going to happen. And the Holy Ghost sent you a word this morning that says, I am God and I change not. Can I tell you this morning, God has got this. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're in. But I got a word from the Holy Ghost that he's still God. The devil wants you to believe that you are in something that's bigger than God. He wants you to believe you're facing something bigger than the God that you're serving this morning. It is the devil's business to steal our faith, our hope, our joy. I truly believe the devil don't care if you come in this building as long as you don't have any joy and no peace and no victory, and especially no hope. I look at people who have lost their praise. I know you've been through a lot, but the thing that you need to emphasize is that you went through it. God kept you. There's been dark days, but in the darkest day of your life, he was still faithful. How in the world can you get to this place and say, what happened to God? Where am I? Can I tell you this morning? He has not changed. Give him a big shout of praise. The Bible said that they limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited God. Can you believe that? He who has all power, they limited God. They put restrictions on him. They thought less of him than what he really was and really is. I got a question for you this morning. Are you limiting God? Are you limiting the God that we serve this morning? Can I just hit something real hard? Quit magnifying your problem more than you magnify the Lord. Yeah, I appreciate the two clapping their hands for me this morning. I appreciate the two preaching with me this morning. I'm going to say it again. You, you worrying and you complaining, it ain't going to change nothing. i tell you what I found. I found that when I magnify the Lord and I give him praise. Yes. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord and bless his holy, wonderful name. Yeah. Oh, magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you limiting God? Are, are you limiting God, watch, to your understanding, how you see it? Two plus two equals four. And 
it, it just don't look like there is an answer. Now, how many of you know that there's always an answer when God's sitting on the throne? He makes a way where there is no way. He, he can do what you can't comprehend he can do. God is able. He's all. Can I get a witness on that? Huh? Let me ask you something. I need you to hear this. Have you limited God to your limitation? What do you mean? Limited God to my limitation. You put God in a box of what you can do. But now because you can't figure it out, you think God can't figure it out. You can't get out of it, so now you think God can't get me out of it. God is bigger than you. God can do more than you can do. He's a miracle worker. I need to tell somebody this morning, God has not changed. I don't care what you're in. He's still God. 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 Why don't you shake off that depression? Why don't you shake off that worry and give God a shout of praise? Why don't you... on, can I get a witness? Amen. Lift your hands and love him for a moment. I'm trying real hard. Amen. I'm trying real hard this morning. Come on, somebody lift your hands and <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you looking at this morning? What are you facing this morning? <laughs> oh, glory. Someone say amen. I think the reason he says in Malachi, I am the Lord and I change not. Hebrew says that he's the same yesterday, today, and what? And forever. I think what he's telling me is that he, look at my past. He had my past. And if he had my past, he's got my present. And if he's got my present. He's got my tomorrow. He's got my next month. He's got my next year. I got a word for you. He's still God. He's still. Woo. How many of you mind standing and giving him a shout of praise if you believe he's still God? He's still God. He's still, he's still God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, make yourself get the victory. Think right. Think right. Think right. Someone say amen. Well, you, 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 you may be seated. Can I tell you that your biggest battle, amen, is not external. Your biggest battle is in between your two ears. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Your biggest battle is in it's your imagination. You're making it worse than what it is. Yeah. You're making it bigger than what it is. Come on. Let, me, let me tell you something. Have you wondered, ever wondered why God let you go through what you went through? Anybody ever wondered that? Went through a sickness? Went through tragedy? Went through dark days? Have you ever wondered why God just didn't heal us and deliver us before we ever went through it? Have you ever wondered that? I'm going to tell you why. It's because when you go through it, whether it's a sickness, a dark day, a tragedy, and you come out on the other side, you praise him a little more. You're a little bit more thankful. You're a little bit more grateful. You ain't got to be pumped and proud by some cheerleader who's trying to get you to praise God. See, if you never went through nothing, you wouldn't understand that he's God. He's God in the valley. He's God in the darkness. He's God, God in the midnight hour. Yes. But because we've been through hell, and I found out that he's God in hell, he's God in the midnight hour. When I get an opportunity, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to bless him. So if you're going through something this morning, can I give you a word? 
can, can, can I just say it like I feel it? Quit being foolish. He's going to give you a testimony. testimony some people too busy crying you can't even hear what the preacher's preaching you 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 so depressed and eat up with it all you do is talk about the problem talk about the problem talk about negativity and then you drag yourself into church because you know you need to be here but you're so beat up in your mind beat up in your mouth all you talk about is neck can I tell you can I tell you Whatever you do, don't let the devil get your tongue. Don't let him get your tongue. Keep the promises of God in your mouth. Keep the high praises of Life and death is in the power of the tongue. (laughs) Someone say amen. Watch this, watch this. He said, how often did they provoke me in the wilderness and grieve me in the desert? They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he had wrought signs in Egypt, his wonders in the field of Zon. Here's what God is saying. How in the world are you in this wilderness? Now you are complaining, you're fussing, you're cussing. Don't you remember? Where I brought you from. If I brought you out of this, don't you know I can bring you out of this? Because he is God and he changes not. Are you in a dead place? Are you dry this morning? Quit fussing and cussing. Quit, quit worrying and complaining. That's right. Huh? Say, what, what, what am I supposed to do? I, I just don't feel good. I don't feel right. I don't feel right in my spirit. Can I tell you, amen, I don't praise God because I feel right. I don't praise God because everything's right. I praise him because he's right. I praise him because... If he brought Lazarus out, he's going to bring you out of the dry place. He's going to restore you. He's going to breathe on you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need somebody in a dry place to stand and give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I need somebody in a dark place to stand and give... for a moment and remember what God has already done. He already brought you out of that pit. He brought you so far. How could we forget this morning what he's already done? If he did it then, he can do it. Someone say amen. He told the disciples, he said, when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, oh, ye of little faith, why reason among you yourself because you have brought no bread. He said, where's your faith? He said, why are you complaining? Do you not remember the five loaves of the 5,000? He said, don't you remember the miracle? I took five loaves and fed 5,000. Don't you remember? Here they are complaining, worrying. He said, neither do you remember the seven loaves of the 4,000 He said, how many baskets did you take up? You can read that in Matthew. He said, don't you remember the seven loaves and all the people we fed and all the baskets you picked up? He said, now you're in a new season and you got a new struggle and you're worrying and you're complaining. He said, you need to remember what I've already done. So God's brought you this far now. He's going to drop you. God's brought you this far and he's going to turn you over to the devil. If God brought you this far, I believe he's going to take us the rest of the way. Yes. 
Do you remember this morning what God has already done? Do you remember what God has already done in your life? Think about it for a moment. Maybe some of you might get happy if you start thinking about what God has done. Maybe, maybe you might get happy if you start thinking about what God has already done. Huh? Already done. Huh? Come on, already done, already done, already done. Already done. I can sit here and give you my testimony, but you need to give your own testimony this morning. Stop and look back at what the Lord has already done. I, I pity the poor man or woman who ain't got a testimony this morning. See, the, a lot of people ain't got a testimony because as soon as it gets hard, they quit church. Can I tell you, in the hardest time is where I've learned God to be the best. I've learned him to be faithful. That's where I, that's where I found him. Do you remember what the Lord has done? Huh? I'm not minimizing at all the pain, the struggle that you're in. But how can you lose hope? How can your mind get negative when we're serving the God that never changes? How can we sit here and lay our praise down and come in in the molly grubs and, we, and you know, gotta, and like, like we got to put off a 10,000-pound a uh, bomb, amen, to get somebody to move? Come on, no. No, listen, we've been through mu too much not to give him praise. We've been through too much. I know, I know it's hard this morning, but I need to let the devil know. I need to let everybody know the same God that delivered me then is the same God that's going to bring me out of what I'm in now. Somebody leap to your feet and give God praise. Somebody leap to your feet and give God praise. in your spirit. Amen. Don't rush me. Come on. Amen. Love God for a moment. Amen. Don't make me cheerily. Come on. Somebody just spontaneous. They got to reach out and love God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Devil, you are alive. I said you are alive. I'm not going to die here. God's going to bring me out. Go ahead and let it get in you. Let it get in you. Let it get in you. Come on, let that negativity, let that, let, let that negativity get out of you this morning. You can't have no praise being negative. Come on. You can't have no praise magnifying the problem. Have you ever wondered why God caused Zacharias to become mute? He couldn't speak. Because when that angel told him, the Lord fixing to visit you in Elizabeth, and she fixed to have a child. And Zachariah said, wait a minute. I'm old now. I'm old. How can that be? And the angel said, it shall be done at the appointed time. And you shall call his name John. Now I'm going to shut your mouth. You couldn't talk. Have you ever wondered why? Because Zacharias was so negative that his negative speech, his doubt that was flowing out of his mouth would have aborted what God was trying to do in Elizabeth and Zachariah's life. Can I tell you, if you can't talk nothing good, then shut your My life's too short to be a dump truck. I need somebody to tell me God's able. I need somebody to tell me God's Come on, somebody, praise him. Somebody, I need somebody who's really going through something. To praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Woo, 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 woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout it to me, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody.
Somebody love the Lord. I'm, I'm moving, I'm moving. I'm, I'm going to quit here. I'm going to quit. Amen. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Can I tell you this morning, maybe you need to change your focus. Maybe you focus too much on the problem and not on who he is. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're frustrated this morning because you're focused on how it's going to happen instead of who's going to do it. How many times has God done something in your life and you look back now and you still don't understand how he did it? I don't need to know how. I just need to know who. I just need to be focused on who. I just need to be focused on who. Come on, give him praise and I'm moving. Give him praise. I'm moving. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. Have you ever thought that every miracle, I'm, 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 I'm closer to being done. Have you ever thought that every miracle that Jesus did, that it was something that they couldn't fix, a man couldn't fix? They was in a hopeless situation. That they, have you ever thought about, I mean, the blind man, the woman with the issue of blood, the men with leprosy, I mean, every one of them. Man said, they said, it's hopeless. And God said, that's exactly where I wanted you to be so I can get all the glory. Because when I'm done with this, everybody gonna know it was me that brought you out. It was me that restored you. So this morning, maybe you got a negative report. And I know the weight of the words of a doctor. I know the weight of the words of death and negativity. It's amazing how a doctor can say something and I mean it just weighs on you. It weighs on you. And can I tell you this morning that we need to allow the promises of God to have greater weight upon our mind and our spirit than what the doctor said or the lawyer said or the judge said or the wife or the kid or, or the enemy. I cannot tell you. I, I appreciate everything, but God is greater than everything. He's greater than everybody. I said he's... There's an old song that we used to sing years ago, and some of you may know it. I believe it was Sister Goldie that used to sing it. He's bigger than all my problems. He's bigger than all my fears. Amen. I know that was in the early 90s when we sung that song. But can I tell you, 2017, he's still bigger than all my problems. Yeah. And he's still bigger than all my fears. Amen. He's bigger than any mountain that I may see or may not see. He's bigger than all my problems and all my fears. He's bigger than anything. Someone, someone say amen. In closing, I want to read this for you. This is Paul. He said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. He said, I pray that you might be able to see properly, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be open. And can I tell you this morning that things have a voice. The pit has a voice. The, the darkness has a voice. I, I've heard it speak to me before. Amen. The enemy has a voice. Yes. And God said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be open. He's going to give you a testimony. You ain't got to stand. Lift your hands to the Lord. You ain't got to stand. Just lift your hands to the Lord. I know you don't know how. I know you're trying to figure it out. 
I know you don't see a way. But I hear the Holy Ghost saying, he's going to make a way. He is the answer. He's got this. He's going to bring you through this. <laughs> Stand to your feet. I need to prophesy to somebody right now. The Lord said, what you fear is going to happen. It will not happen. What's been still in your sleep, in your peace, in your prayer life, in your victory? The Lord said, what you fear is going to happen, it's not going to happen. I need somebody to love the Lord. I don't know who you are. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I don't know who the Holy Ghost is talking to. But you replay it over and over and over in your mind. What's going to happen? And the Lord said, that ain't going to happen. That ain't how it's going to play out. He's the author and finisher of my faith. He's the one that directs our steps. The steps of a righteous man are Order of the Lord. <laughs> Am I preaching anybody in here? Am I just preaching myself this morning? Huh? Let me ask you this morning. Who is it in here? That's plagued with fear and worry. Don't raise your hand. Who is it? 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Fear, worry, just weighting you down. The Lord told you what you fear is not going to play out like that. I said, the Lord said it ain't going to play out like that. He knows the end from the beginning. Now, I don't know who you are this morning, but if I was you, I'd grab a hold of that word, and I'd fight off that worry and that depression. Amen. It ain't doing nothing but stealing your victory and your joy. Amen. I'd remember on this Sunday morning that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that God has been faithful. He's healed my body. He's delivered me. He's brought me out. He's answered my prayers. And this new battle I'm in is no different than what I've already been through. I said it's no different than what I've already been through. Come on, I'm finished. Lift your hands and love the Lord. Lift your hands and love the Lord. I'm finished. Come on, lift your hands and love the Lord. I'm finished. I'm finished. Glory to God. 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 Well, I was going to sing that song. He's God on the platform. He's God at the back door. But the feeling I feel in here right now, I probably don't need that song. <laughs> Sorry, Brother Mark. I appreciate you learning the song. But we probably don't need that right now. Because I feel a heaviness in here instead of victory. I don't feel praise in here. I don't feel liberty in here. Anybody feel it? I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I don't feel it this morning. Somebody ain't receiving the word that you need to receive this morning. The word did not profit them for it was not mixed with faith. Come on, somebody. See, you get this kind of word, you ought to be dancing out of your shoes right now. Not because we're emotional, but I believe what God said. Yes. I believe what God said. Yes. Amen. I know it's dark. I'm already stinking, and there's a stone in the mouth of the cave, and I can't move it. I can't get out, but I hear the Holy Ghost saying, amen, I'm going to move the stone, and I'm going to bring you out. If that don't put a praise in you... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to fight for you this morning. I'm trying to fight for you this morning. Amen. You got to grab a hold of it. You got to want it. You got to believe it. I said you got to believe it. I heard a preacher preaching. We're fixing to have an altar call. We're going to pray. I heard a preacher preaching, and, and he had had a stroke and uh, couldn't talk, couldn't see, lost his hearing. A preacher, a man of God, and uh, went to the doctor and uh, trying to find out what happened. Why did he get the stroke? And what had happened? They have found a blockage in his neck that caused the stroke. And they told him, said, well, the, the blockage, the, the stroke and what's happened, that's not the issue. The issue is that the top of your heart is like jello and it's like this. He said, if we fix that, you're going to be fine. And, and so he was praying and he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, why in the world didn't you just heal me? What? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Lord asked him, said, do you remember your cousin that died a couple years ago? I'm telling the church. And the preacher said, yeah. And the Lord said, what did he die of? He died of the same thing. Heart failure. And the Lord said, do you know why you didn't die? The preacher said, why? He said, because there's still a purpose for your life. There, I still got a purpose. He brought him out of that. He's preaching. He's doing fine. The video I've seen, 70-something 70, 70 years old, he was shouting. He was dancing. He's I said 70 something years old. Yeah. Can I tell you why you're going to survive this and come out? God's got a purpose for your life. God's got a purpose for your life. And I'm going to say, oh, I, 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 I'm going to tell you, if the devil was here right now, I don't care if he was 10 foot tall, I would jack him up this morning. I would kick him in his shin. I'd bite him. You know why? Because he's told some of us, because of what we've been through, amen, we've forfeited our ministry. We can never be used. The devil is a liar. God's giving you a testimony. God has given you a testimony. Will you lift your hands and love the Lord up through? God's got a purpose. He's given you a testimony. You'll find your ministry in what you've been through. I said you'll find your ministry in what you've been through. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll find your strength through the weakest times of your life. It becomes your power. Oh, glory. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I need somebody that I'm preaching to. To come and stand around and just lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. I need somebody who believes what this preacher's preaching this morning. That is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't need to know how. I just need to know who. I just need to know who. Oh, glory. Whew. Oh, it sure is quiet up in here. It sure is quiet up in here. Amen. It sure is quiet up in here. Glory to God. Glory to God. It sure is quiet in here. Amen. If you won't backslide and leave God, that's your business. Amen. But I'm fighting this thing through. I'm fighting this thing through. I ain't losing what God gave me. I said I ain't losing what God gave me. I don't care. I don't care what I got. I'm going to fight this thing through. Come on, somebody, come up around the front and help your preacher. Amen. Let's reach out to God for a moment. Let's reach out to God for a moment. Go ahead, brother. Whatever you feel there. Come on, come up. Come up, come up. I need some elders to reach over and pray with somebody. Come on, I need somebody that's been through something.
they're going to do in the midnight hour. I'm going to let my praise and magnify the Lord. Sing that with me. 